What's up, everybody? Let's see what's hey, here. Something, something, something. Tactical. We are at Snake Creek Shooting Sports here in Beggs, Oklahoma. And you're watching Big Wayne 918. Check me out. Assistant team leader, okay, dignitary protection specialist, firearms instructor, and state law enforcement. Y'all give it up for the team with that, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Sure, for sure, man. Appreciate so, it. So definitely we're gonna we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into uh, gun safety, your teachers Absolutely. and all that. Yeah. But let's take me back to the beginning, man. How did how did you get so engulfed in law enforcement and what brought you yeah. to Oklahoma? Man, you know what? The, the crazy part all about the, about all this is I started thinking about Alpha One when I was 16 years old. Okay. You know, I started making an email address and it was Alpha One Tactics underscore INC. And I didn't even have to finish high school yet. Okay. But for some reason, I knew that this was going to be something that I wanted to continue and pursue. It was just firearm safety, training, that kind of thing. So, after watching all the military movies and SWAT movies and everything else, yeah. <laughs> I knew that's kind of something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my father and his family served in the military, and so I just found out my great grandfather served in World War II as well. So it was a passion uh, throughout the Whitset lineage for us to, okay. to serve. Uh, I unfortunately got a pretty severe injury in football, so I broke my leg. I okay. had metal going through it. So the military was out of the picture for me. You know, because it, there's no waiver for that mm -hmm. at that point. So I started looking at it and going, what do I want to do? I knew that I had a passion to serve. I knew that I wanted to help the community. I knew I wanted to make things better. And so I said, you know what? I'm going law enforcement. So I came to Oklahoma. Uh, I didn't have a high school diploma. I didn't have a GED. I didn't have anything. Oh. Yeah, so. That's, I, that's, <laughs> that's basically yeah. nothing. Nothing. I had nothing. I come from a very poor home. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, my mother was uh, addicted to drugs. You know, my dad took us and me, raised by, raised by our stepmother, uh, in a two bedroom apartment. You know, my, me and my brother grew up in that apartment until we were adults. You okay. Know, and, and then when we hit our 20s, my, my dad got a house because my, my sister was born. But grew up in a pretty low income area. Um, so I've seen it all and I, I, I knew that there's always something better out there. My dad always strives to make things better, no matter. It was working three jobs. Yeah. It didn't matter if you didn't see him at the football games because mm -hmm. you knew where he was. But in that work, man. Yeah, exactly. yeah family's the same so, care, man. Yeah. I know I uh, I missed both of my kids' uh, events yesterday because of working. So I know, man, it's always a sacrifice. It is, man. And it's a good one. You know, I, yeah. they, they understand it and they respect it. And that's what I did with my dad. When those games were going on, I knew that he was working to provide for us. And so... I took his work ethic moving on, even though, even though I, dro I dropped out my senior mm -hmm. year uh, because I was hurt. I mean, I couldn't play ball. I couldn't do anything really. I, I started falling with the wrong crowd because I was hurt, couldn't go to the yeah. military. You know what I mean? So uh, after years and years of working, you know, living on the street as well, you know, I saw an opportunity in Oklahoma. My brother moved down here as a convicted felon. So he left and I saw how he changed his life. You mm -hmm. know, he started working, things were going good for him. I said, man, let me go out, let me go see what this Oklahoma's all about. And yeah. So I came down here to visit my brother. You know, my grandparents from Turley. Um, okay. My brother and have been there forever. And so, uh, went to grandma's house first. I was like, okay, hell, this, where we at? <laughs> yeah. Whole new world. It's world. The country out here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whole yeah. new world. Yeah. yeah. So, um, my uncle took me in. Uh, he was a Mohawk man. And so. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I stayed there for a while with him. And then, went back to school. Um. Uh, by the grace, Oklahoma has the homeschool rule. So you can be homeschooled, you can test it and go to community college. 
So I was never an idiot. Mm -hmm. I was just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Doing my own stuff. So I went ahead and enrolled in TCC. And got my high school diploma. Got my college. Went to Langston. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Art Williams. He's my professor. Okay, okay. <laughs> Crazy Dr. Art. You call me okay. my cop. Yeah, no, I'm not about, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Loved him, man. Still love him. And uh, so got, and then I enrolled in uh, Tulsa County. I didn't have any idea what I was going to do with county. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell me I had to work the jail, anything. They just said, hey, well, I was just happy to be on. You know? So, so you were a CO? Yeah, I well, started off as okay. CO. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, for about three years, uh, and then promoted to deputy after that. So they started seeing the hunger, you know. When I, I still had that same ethic, you know, the, you know, hard work, treat people with respect, and you get respect. I've got multiple family members who've been on both sides of the tracks, mm -hmm. so I know that people make mistakes. It's that simple. Yeah. You're not perfect, you know. I, I call them, and I, with all the utmost respect, I call them the Johnny Bravos of law enforcement. Right? <laughs> yeah, the ones who've yeah. never really been into nothing, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So they have this perception of what it should be like and how people should act. But there's no balance there. It's only bias. So that that jail changed my life because I got to, I got to learn behavior of people, their stories, mm -hmm. you know. And moreover, like I told my students when I started teaching at the jail academy, people make mistakes. Yeah. Not one of you in this room is perfect. So don't go down there with that philosophy of, of you are, because you won't last there. The reason why I last at jail is because I treated everybody with respect. Now when you disrespected me, we had a conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey. Let's not cross that line. Yeah. We're getting a little foolish here. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Just like mm -hmm. you would anybody else in the street. You know, hey, chill, you know? And it worked out so well. I had more good memories from working at jail than bad. Those guys were some of the funniest people on planet Earth. What kind of was this? Uh, this can't Tulsa. Tulsa County, yeah. okay. Uh, it was, so you uh, got from the Moss. Yes, I was the Moss. Oh, the Moss. Oh, moss. <laughs> Man. And I worked high by no mind. So these guys are in for armed robbery all the way up to murder one. Oh, okay. And so, you know, you see the street side. Hey, this is a for real <laughs> yeah. But that has yeah. such a respect. Yeah. Them. And even when I see them in the street, some of them when I worked at the lower level pots, it's still the same respect. Now, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I still enjoy it. You know, I had it in 2018, I promoted to corporal. And they gave me an opportunity to uh, work for Tulsa Housing Authority. Okay. And so they said, you know, we have at this point 17 properties throughout Tulsa, and uh, we are going to give you a sergeant. So yeah, they put somebody over me, and then uh, six deputies. And these guys were hand selected, you know, for their skill set, mm -hmm. you know, through their resume interview process. And I can tell you, it was some of the humblest people, but they also had the job. To, you know, they knew what their job was, you know, to take care of business out in the field. So we had everything from Comanche, Apache. It was crazy going back to Mohawk. Man, they, <laughs> they gave y'all all the, uh, yeah. I mean, they gave y'all all of them. Town Square. Town Hall, oh, man. Meadows, uh, East Central Village. So they pretty much gave y'all all the projects. And all, the, all the projects. They gave you all of them, man. And I, I, always, I, I, I uh, always go back to thinking of them dropping us in an anthill. Okay, mm -hmm. and telling us to crawl our way out, mm -hmm. you know, because it was difficult. The relationship between civilians and law enforcement was not there, yeah. and their perception of it, it wasn't. It was, what y'all doing here? You know, then nobody. The all, only time they saw law enforcement was to handle calls and then leave. Mm -hmm. So now here we are walking the beat through Comanche. You know, like what? Yeah, what you guys doing here? <laughs> yeah. But it, after the years, man, let me tell you, it has worked so much. Just the communication, getting out of the cars and talking to people. Even when there's bad people to be found, bad things happen. If you have that good relationship, it's not snitching because they want those bad people out of their neighborhood just as bad as we do. Yeah. And in our good neighborhoods, factor in my life structure, my dad wasn't afraid to, you know, go hands on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think we were, you know, me being that '83 baby. I think we're, you know, one of the last few that got their behind tore up. You yeah, know? I'm '82, so I know. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, man. I'm with you, bro. I'm yeah, with you, had, you. You didn't want to come home at all. <laughs> <laughs> you nervous, man? Bumps in your stomach. Yeah. And it seemed like everyone else, you get yeah. to school, everybody else be happy. Yeah, for real. Everybody's, it's, it's a nice day. Everybody's basking yeah. in the glory of a good day. Yeah. And you sitting up like, man, this is not going to be good. What's right that? What's the old boy's name from the horror movie uh, with the white mask on? Mike Myers? Yeah, Mike my, Myers. My dad was like Mike Myers, bro. Like, if you messed up at school, they would call him. Yeah. And you'd be laughing, joking. And then you look over at the door, and he'd be standing there. Oh, the man. <laughs> Bust out. Bust hey, what's that movie? When, hey, 
<laughs> What's that one where they snap where people getting snatched up? Yeah. Man, that's how it used to be for me. <laughs> you be in church. Hey, real talk, man. Like, uh, we grew up in church, man. Yeah. So you be in church, man. Uh, you sitting in the pew because my mom's in the choir. Man. Yeah. They was in the choir. So we were sitting playing, you know, nothing. Yeah. Just in there, just really cutting up in church and all of a sudden somebody gets snatched up. Oh, yeah. It's just like that, man. <laughs> and you don't get, you will be disciplined in church. Oh, yeah. And then once that discipline's over, you will sit back in your seat. Mm -hmm. She will get back in the choir stand. Yep, just, stop crying. You'll yeah, boy, you probably. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm looking at you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, and she gave you that look like, shut it up. Yeah, you know what I mean? if she, if she uh, looks at you one time, that's basically a warning. That's for real. If you that's make eye contact, like, it don't matter if I'm sitting there doing like yeah. this. If I make eye contact, okay, let me just check myself. <laughs> I'm clearly doing something. But, uh, you know, but once you see up there, you act like you look up, your mom missing from the choir stand. You know what's happening. Yeah, you, you know what's up. <laughs> yeah, popping up on I wasn't an shooter at all. I barely touched a gun. The uh, first time I touched a gun, actually, was in Oklahoma. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so I never even unofficially. Uh, <laughs> but you know, Oklahoma, I'm telling yeah. you, man, everybody got guns here, man. So. I know. So that, that was yeah, a good surprise. Me. Yeah. So, so yeah. And then uh, I was able to do that and just kind of grow my training from there. So I'm going to read this little excerpt. Like I said, I'm not no paralegal, no concierge, <laughs> okay? So these are not, you know, y'all want, you know, legal advice? Be sure that y'all, yeah, I got to do this one. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I got my disclaimer in there. But I'm going to read a little excerpt on here. Um, it's from the Second Amendment. It says, "A it is just an excerpt. I'm not reading the whole thing. We ain't got that much time. I'm just reading the excerpt. Uh, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It was, it, it, it was against the structure of government, right? At that yeah. point, government was taking over or attempting to. The Constitution says, we're able to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and bear arms. If me and you decide to come up with Op One tactical militia tomorrow, there's yeah. absolutely nothing no, that people can keep us from doing that. We are allowed to protect ourselves against tyranny or from tyranny, and so that's where I absolutely love reading the Constitution and the laws that are, that go with, such as. Uh, any case law that we can go into, and I'm not an attorney either. <laughs> so with that being yeah, said, yeah. if you have any, any legal advice, make sure you consult with a actual attorney. Uh, but I'm going to give you my perception of what um, and my thought process on when it comes to bearing arms, especially in the communities we live in. And, yeah. and here's the thing, because I'm see when people read that I just read translation to everybody else. Yeah, man, I'm packing. That means I got all my guns. I'm packing my nine. I got my Draco on the front seat. I got my 38. I got my 40. So when people really, this this law right here is really meant for us to protect. Is a protect ourselves against. Protect ourselves. We have the right to protect ourselves with firearms if necessary. Mm -hmm. And then the laws that apply with that, such as obviously deadly force and all that stuff, kind of trickle down from that with case laws that have occurred over the years. But on the base level, we are allowed to protect ourselves with firearms, and we should, okay? Mm -hmm. Things are getting a little bit worse than they used to be. We have a huge population of law enforcement that are either retiring, or we have a huge population who are quitting, and some of them rightfully so. Um, but we're not getting that layer of protection we used to have with the police, okay? Yeah. Which means more crime is going to occur because there's nobody to respond to. Communities are getting larger. Yeah, too. communities are getting larger. Yeah. And so we have the ability to, and we should protect ourselves. One of the, the, the things I, I hate is when I hear, I don't want to get a gun because, you know, the, the stigma of bad guns are for bad guys. Right? Bad guys have guns. I'm scared of it. I don't want nothing to do with it. You, you're right about one thing. Bad guys do have guns, and they have a lot of them. They don't care about laws at all. Their, their, their job is to complete whatever mission they have in their head. Whether that be robbing you, st stealing from you, killing mm -hmm. you, killing you yeah. right? And if we have no layer of protection at all but hope, hope ain't gonna work. No. Hope don't win wars. No. <laughs> no. So the only way that we can become more of a protected, safe community is for us to bear arms. You have to be able to say, okay, you know what, I'll put it aside. But what's gonna alleviate that stress? Training. Training. Simply going to a class and getting yourself in a basic level intro class and saying, okay, and now I have to start building on my foundation. You don't start year one in college and know year four stuff. 
Mm-hmm. You got to start on ground up. Yeah. Like, it's like going with the ABCs all over again. And that's okay. Per, uh, personal speed, like I said earlier, I was a beginner shooter. I never shot a gun ever until I started learning, going to, to classes, looking at YouTube, learning how to break my gun apart, how to clean up all this stuff, until I got comfortable enough to go to the range by myself and then build upon my skill set. But we have to get rid of the stigma that we should not have guns in our communities because there are great law-abiding citizens in these communities that should have a, should be able to protect themselves. And they shouldn't be scared of that gun. Yeah. And, you know, um, that's what we do here at Snake Creek. We help you get prepared for the, possibly the worst day of your life. See, I hear that, man. It's all about protection, okay? Look, before you choose your loadout, okay? <laughs> Take a class. Yes. I got my man right here. He's gonna educate you, um, and we do a couple of demos. Absolutely. You know what I'm